All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back at it with another long form video. And without further ado, let's dive right into it. So I've started to do polling um, for on my YouTube channel for weekly, weekly polls, asking questions to my current YouTube subscribers. And one of them um, just um, gave a great suggestion for how to stay fit and energized with a desk job, boosting energy and crushing your post-work exhaustion. Because a lot of us are working, um, you know, nine to fives. We're working five days a week, uh, sometimes more. And when we get off work, and if we're people, and if we're someone that likes to train after work, it can be very difficult. I'll be honest with you; it's not easy. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk about this and I want to give a quick shout out to, uh, my buddy Neil. So Neilish, uh, for, for, or I think it's Neilish nine, four, seven. I'm just going to check because I'm going to be asking you guys for my long form content week over week. Um, and I don't want to get back into doing like one piece. It's going to be like podcast style like this. Um, and I will be asking, for your guys' feedback on what do you want to see for long-term, uh, long-form content. So yeah, it's Neilish47. So giving them a special shout out for this episode um, about how to, you know, find energy when you're, you're, you're like after work, when you're, you're feeling drained, you're unmotivated, you're feeling sluggish and you're just not that into it. So um, let's, let's dive right into it. So I want to first start off by saying, Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I hope you guys have been enjoying my my um, themed content. I've been doing theme content around like Halloween. I've been getting back into running. I've show showcased how to kind of get back into certain activities or building rebuilding habits that maybe you had in the past that um, maybe you want to get back into or you just want to build new habits. So that's what my channel is all about. Is it's about improving your psychology, your mind, your body, um, and your spirit. So. Thank you all for uh, for joining me again on this on this episode. So, um, we're going to be diving into something today that affects many of us: keeping active and healthy while working a desk job. So, I know um, firsthand how challenging it can be to feel energized after a long day, um, after a long day staring at a screen, especially when you're working on a computer. And I've had those days where all I want to do is crash on the couch and do nothing else. But over time, I've picked up a few tricks that actually help me stay on top of my fitness goals without burning out. So if you're ready to feel less drained, get more active, and keep that momentum going, you're in the right place. So section one, we're going to talk about why desk jobs drain us. So first, let's talk about why we feel so drained after a desk job. It might seem weird since technically we're not even moving much, but mentally we're using a ton of energy. Our brains are so constantly on, and believe it or not, mental work can be just as exhausting exhausting as physical work. Um, plus, staying in one place for hours takes a toll on our body. So, how do we combat this? The key is to add simple strategic actions into our day to keep energy levels up and reduce the feeling of exhaustion by the time we're done with work. Again, apologize for my <clears throat> nasaliness. I'm battling uh, uh, sickness right now, but I want to get this piece of content out for you guys. Section two, movement breaks at work. Now, something that I've kind of factored into my day every day, I wear my Fitbit. I don't know. I'll, I'll, most people nowadays are wearing some sort of smartwatch to distract their movement. Even when I'm working eight hours a day at my desk job, I've been in financial services basically all my 20s i'm 31 now um it is not easy to stay moving it is not easy to um get you know those sluggish energy slump feelings so ways to combat that get up and move just get up from your chair every hour um this has helped me immensely because if i just sit like in like some people just sit through their entire work day and work i i can't do that i'm literally up every hour and that and basically every hour that I'm up, I'm moving 250 to 500 steps. Now, I don't clock that, but my it's all tracked. But basically just from being at work, getting up and moving, I'm moving four to 5,000 steps per day at work. And I don't work a physical job. We're just talking. This is just about desk jobs, people that work in an office environment. 
you're an engineer, you're a banker, you're an insurance broker, you're your office administrator, your administrator, whatever your office work might be, all of us got to sit um, in those kinds of environments. So it does make it challenging to keep, to find ways to keep your energy high during the day. So, so that's what we've just talked about. Tip number one is adding movement breaks throughout your workday. I know it sounds basic, but these breaks are game changers. Every hour or so, get up and do something active for even just two to three minutes. Do a quick stretch, take a lap around the office, or even do a few squats or calf raises. Now, I know it look, might look funny or stuff like that. I don't, I don't typically do like squats or calf raises or anything like that at work. I don't do that kind of movement. I just will move around. I will walk around. So if we're just going to absolute basics, just, just get up from your chair and just walk around the office. And I typically like to... I'm either rehydrating or having my second coffee for the morning, for example. Let's just say early to late morning, right? This movement um, will help reduce that stiffness that keeps your blood flowing, which makes a huge difference by the end of the day. And if you can sneak in a longer walk during your lunch, even better. So tip one, walk, get up from your chair, walk around the office. Tip two, sorry, tip one, walk around the office. Tip two, um, go for a lunch walk. If you're in the proximity of your work and you have an extended lunch, that's like an hour. If you're someone that has a, a lunch lunch hour, then try and utilize that where you're eating for a part of it and then walking for the rest of it because walking actually aids in digestion and it'll give you an afternoon energy pick-me-up. Section three, fuel your body right. Next, let's talk about fuel. What you eat during the day has a direct impact on how you feel after work. Skip the heavy carb-loaded lunches that leave you feeling sluggish. Instead, go for meals that are balanced with protein, healthy fats, and complex carbs. Think a salad with chicken, avocado, and some quinoa, or smoothie packed with greens and protein. So typically, my energy, I find, is the highest when I'm dialing back the carbs. It's when I'm having those afternoon carbs um, or carb loading my lunches that, and all of us well feel that dip in our energy. We want our energy remain higher into the afternoon and into the evening for all of our other projects that we want to tackle and post work exercise and to be in, in and for our body to be in a energy surplus to tackle that workout after work, which it, it, again, it's not easy. Um, I would definitely recommend dialing back your carbs before you're going to be training after work um so then you can have more carbs more into the evening after you train um like let's say after your dinner so so try that so dial back the carbs high protein high fat because fat your fat calories clock in at nine calories a gram so carbs are four but yes carbs are still essential and they give us glucose for for our energy stores but they still, it's carbs are about timing. So if we're thinking about timing and when we want to train and when we want to move, um, and I'll give you an example, uh, for an example. So I started r r getting back into running again. And the only way that I could also do it because I was really tired and I was, I've been running after work and doing night running because I get off at 5 30 PM. So I'm working nine to 5 30 PM and I'm not home till basically 5 45 so what I would do is me and my wife would walk the dog first. First piece of business is we move because we've been at work all day and in junk light, the lights in your office and stuff. It's not, you know, we're, you know, humans need sun or they need outdoor light. So the best way to do that, even when it gets dark, even though it's dark at basically 630 now, everyone needs that little bit of light or outdoor time. So, or just being in nature. So first order of business, I get home, I get into my, uh, basically workout gear and we walk the dog. And if, and if we're focusing on making dinner first, then what I do is while my wife's making dinner, we alternate on making dinner because I'm doing this new run challenge. I'll either run right after work or I'll run after dinner. So it's either dinner first, then exercise or exercise first, then dinner. 
So, and when you're saying, oh man, I'm not motivated to do that after dinner, I'm usually feeling quite tired. I totally get it. I feel the same way. The only difference that psychologically that I make, the mental tweak that you got to make is I tie something I don't really want to do with something I really want to do. So the dog's got to be walked. I do not like to walk the dog all the time, but it's got to be done. He needs exercise just as much as we need exercise. So I tie the run with the walk, with the dog walk. So, and our dog loves to run. So this new habit that I've created for myself has also been created for the dog. So it's a double win for both of us because the dog gets walked or the dog gets ran for 20 to 30 minutes. And that basically is equivalent to, a, you know, our 30 to 45 minute walk or 30 minute to an hour walk, right? Because the pace is way slower on the walk but it's way faster on the run. So it's a double win for us with um, when I run the dog because it doesn't matter when I do it. Some nights it's later, some nights it's earlier, but it gets done because I tie that, my activity that I want to do with an activity that I don't necessarily want to do. And that's what's driving me forward. And it's not about motivation. It's all about which do I prefer to do more? And then I, and then I stack those habits accordingly. Um, yeah, so we were talking about, again, fueling your body, right? We talked about keeping the protein high, fats high, carbs lower. Um, again, when you're at, when you're at work and you're having lunch and stuff like that to keep your energy the highest in throughout the day. Um, and don't forget to snack smart, keep energy boosting snacks on hand, like nuts, fruit, or yogurt. And when I say yogurt, I don't mean plain yogurt. That's got no protein in it. I mean, Greek yogurt. Like think like Kirkland brand from Costco or Oikos or Siggy's. Uh, I'm, no, I'm talking about Canadian brands, but um, and then in the U.S. there's there's Shabani, which is high protein. So just focus on high protein, low or no sugar, uh, Greek yogurt if you're gonna vow for yogurt. And then another trick is if you find that you crash in the afternoon, a nice little snack in between work tasks or work projects that you can have towards the end of your day, let's say three hours before the end of your day or two and a half hours, opt for trail mix, like some cashews, some peanuts or trail, like a, just an overall mix with cashews, peanuts, almonds. That'll give you that. Those healthy fats will give you an energy boost for the afternoon. Then they'll lead into the evening and into your workout um, or make yourself a healthy yogurt parfait with Greek high protein, Greek yogurt aim for like, 30 grams of protein, like make it the night before and then bring that to work, put in a little Tupperware, add some berries, add some, even, even add your trail mix into the, and the, to the yogurt. And then you've made yourself a high protein snack for the afternoon or for your lunch or a snack in the afternoon to lead you into your energy surplus for the evening. These are just strategies to use to keep your blood sugar low, but your energy higher. So your energy doesn't crash. And then next thing Section four, create a post-work routine. So I talked about my routine, how I, we either, my, me and my wife either dive into making dinner right away and then I will, and then we'll, or we'll walk the dog together and then make dinner or make dinner and then I will run the dog while dinner's being made. So you got to figure out what routine works for you. For myself, um, it's the mo, mo, relying on motivation never works because we're all going to, if we give ourselves a split second to think about, oh, do I want to do this or not? The decision's made. You're not going to do it. So rather than me even think about even wanting to do it or not, I stack the evening, the, the night before basically, of, okay, what are we going to tackle? I'm very routine. Human beings are very, can be very routine and habitual, but use that to your advantage. Use your current habits to your advantage and just kind of reverse engineer the order. So you do the hardest, I find doing the hardest things first that you don't necessarily want to do makes everything easier over time. And again, will keep your energy higher. So tip number three is one of my favorites is creating a post-work routine that makes working out feel less like a chore. As soon as I get home, I don't sit down or change into my comfy clothes. I change into my workout clothes and I go straight to my workout gear. This way, I don't give myself a chance to talk, talk myself out of it. So I kind of, in my bedroom, I lay out my workout gear. We have a kind of a meditation or reading chair in the corner of my bedroom. 
or our bedroom. And I set aside, as long as I didn't sweat in the workout gear the night before, right? The shirt I always sweat in, the t-shirt, but the, let's say my my joggers or uh, socks, right? If I just walked the previous day, I'll reuse those pants or those joggers. Um, and then I'll just swap the shirt because I, I sweat quite a bit. So I will reuse the joggers, the socks, and then I'll, again, I'll have my my shoes at the front door. So just lay out your routine the night before so you're ready to go. And again, if you work out from home, I work out from home as well. Um, that's the way I do it. That's what keeps me accountable to, I'm like, okay, then it primes my brain. Oh, I have to, I have to train, right? Not, not that, sorry, not that I have to train. I want to train. And even the days that I don't want to train, it puts my brain in a position that, okay, this is what's next. This is what's next. And I'm not having to think about it. It's, it's automatic. It's, it's just, everything's automatic. <clears throat> so like I said, set out your workout clothes ahead of time, have a quick snack to recharge and get moving before your brain can think twice about it. Remember action beats motivation every single time. Section five, short workouts are still effective. Now, if you're really low on energy, Here's a reminder, you don't need to work out for an hour to get results. I'm a big fan of 20 to 30 minute wor workout sessions. Hell, I've even done 15 minute workout sessions and had a great sweat. Quick, a quick hit workout, a brisk walk, or even a stretching session can make a massive difference in how you feel. The key is consistency, not duration. So in the past, when I was in my earlier 20s, I'm 31 now, um, I would be so obsessed about time. I'm like, oh, I need to train 40 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. You don't need to train that long. And in fact, you probably won't be able to train that long over time as you age because you're going to have more responsibilities. You're going to own your own home. You're going to be in a, um, you're going to be engaged or be, 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 get married or you are married. Um, you're going to have kids or maybe you've ha you already have a child. So you got to, you got to dial back the duration and just focus on being consistent. And when I say consistent, it also doesn't mean necessarily every way, every day of training. I don't train every day. What I do now, I used to train every single day with weight training, like five, six days a week, but that doesn't work for my risk schedule now. That doesn't work for my lifestyle now. I've tweaked it. I still basically move. The new mission is moving every day. But how I move every day will vary because of how my body, where my body's at. Because as you age, right, you're you're starting to feel not more, not necessarily aches and pains. I'm never in pain, but sometimes you might have tweaked something in the previous workout. It's just if you're not constantly moving your body, um, stretching. Stretching is super important in my routine now because. I didn't used to do it in my twenties. And then, you know, you pay for it when you get older, right? If you're not, you have to do those things, even when you don't want to, I, I don't like to stretch, but I know I have to do it. And I know how amazing it makes me feel. So again, this isn't a motivational, this isn't about motivation. This is a, a tweak in my psychology that I've been able to make because I don't want to be in pain. You don't want to be in pain. So if you don't want to be in pain, my mindset is okay. Um, I just ran like 5k. I got to stretch. If I don't do it, I'm going to feel like a hundred in the morning and I don't want to feel that way. So keep that in mind. Um, utilize shorter duration workouts, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes for your hit training, walking, figure out for you what your bare minimum of movement um, is for you. For me on the days that I'm literally like, like this week, I've been sick. My voice is shot. I got chest congestion. I've taken this week, I've dialed things back because I need to recover because me and my wife are going on a trip this Sunday to Cancun. So I don't want to be sick in Cancun. So I've had to dial back accordingly my exercise, right? But my bare minimum for movement when I'm not feeling well is a walk or yoga. Those are So when you can't ramp up your intensity as much as you normally do, always do at least the bare minimum figure out what your bare minimum is for you to feel to feel good and to give you that jolt of energy for me it's a daily walk and if i miss a walk at least i want to get some sort of like five to ten minutes stretch in or longer if i can so dial back the duration 
increase the frequency to be consistent, and I guarantee you you'll feel better. Section six, prioritizing sleep and recovery. So sleep and recovery is super important. So when you're feeling extra sluggish, when you're feeling like your energy is not there, a big part of that, honestly, in the top three, hell, I'd even put it at number one, right? Your nutrition's got to be dialed in, your movement's got to be dialed in, but none of that stuff works. None of that will work as effectively as you want it to if you're not sleeping and recovering enough. So sleep and recovery go hand in hand. So sleep increase, so sleeping and recovering are synonymous with each other. But the, inter the interesting thing is recovery for me is, and there's two parts to recovery for me. It's sleep and it's stretching, mobility, yoga. That falls under recovery as well. So you need to get your uh, adequate sleep, seven to eight hours a night, and you need to make sure that you're um, doing like, you know, a post-workout walk or or, uh, or a bare minimum, get your walk out of the way, half an hour, 20 minutes, um, and then doing some sort of yoga or or mobility to help keep your joints like, you know, functioning well, right? For whatever workout you're trying to tackle. And I try and make the mobility or the yoga workout specific to how I'm training. So I've I've actually posted and created my own free run routine, pre run um, stretching or mo sorry, pre run mobility, post run mobility, because it's super important, right? Because depending on how you're training or how you're moving, or the job that you do, you want to correlate your movement patterns to that. So you're opening up your body in certain ways. So I'm someone that's a very deep sleeper, going back to prioritizing sleep and recovery. I need like three alarms. I've got a sleep cycle alarm, which again, uh, uh, Neelish 47, um, um, when I was living uh, in the back in the Nimo, um, we were, uh, he was telling me about it and it's actually really effective because it wakes you up in the lighter part of your sleep cycle. So it, so you're not feeling like you got hit by a truck in the morning. It's, it's more manageable because when you're a deep sleeper, it is, it's difficult, right? There's, in every partnership, in every relationship, there's a lighter sleeper and a deeper sleeper. And I'm definitely the deeper sleeper. So I need more um, alarms and stuff like that to help me get out of bed in the morning. So this next tip is many that many of us overlook is prioritizing sleep and recovery. No amount of caffeine will replace your good night's sleep. Try to aim for seven to eight hours a night and make sure to wind down properly with something relaxing like reading, stretching, or listening to common music. Something that I do, if I'm really, really stiff, like I've been feeling like post-workout, sometimes two days after my workouts or my runs, I'm very, very stiff. So sometimes I have to stretch before bed. So I'll incorporate that into my evening routine. I'll uh, back in, uh, bookend the, the stretching prior to bedtime. And then last night, for example, I did meditation in bed because I didn't get my meditation done in the morning. So... I don't like to be too, I like to be fluid with my routine. I used to be very rigid with it. Nowadays, I'm very fluid. So use the same strategy for yourself. Be fluid because there's going to be, there's going to be social expectations. You're going to be, meet, you know, spending time with family and friends and your partner. And so in order to keep your routine going and your, ha your positive habits that you're building for yourself going, just keep those things in mind. And it's not about being perfect. It's about being disciplined and showing up. And the more that you show up, the better you get and the more consistent you'll become. And then the more that you're not relying on motivation on, you can't, you can't rely on motivation for any of these habits. You're relying on your discipline and your habits. Your habits will eventually get formed when your brain and body are in, are uh, in sync with whatever it is your um, habit you're trying to build that you, or you, that you have been building. So when you're well-rested, Everything else falls into place. You'll be more energized, focused, and way less likely to skip that workout. Section seven, change your mindset. My final tip is all about mindset. Instead of thinking of exercise as an extra task, try to see it as an act of self-care, something you're doing for you. It's a shift that makes staying active feel rewarding rather than draining. Remember, staying fit isn't about just the gym. 
It's about making choices each day that add up to a healthier, happier you. So to wrap it up, maintaining an active lifestyle with a desk job is totally possible with the right approach. Incorporating movement into your workday, fuel your body properly, and establish a post-workout routine, post-work routine, focus on short, consistent workouts, prioritize sleep, and most importantly, see this journey as an investment in yourself. Trust me, you'll start to notice a difference. Thank you all for listening to this long-form piece of content about finding ways to boost your energy post-work after you've been working your desk job or your 9-to-5. If you enjoyed this video or found these tips helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you, ha subscribe if you haven't, and let me know in the comments what, what's your biggest struggle with staying active while working a desk job. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. And again, this video was all about how to stay fit and energized with a desk job, boosting energy, and crushing post-work exhaustion.